Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time to study God's holy word. I'm Bishop Van Sharp, and I pray and hope that you had a tremendous day on today. It's Tuesday. That's right, an exciting Tuesday because the Bible declares that the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him. So God encamps around those of us who reverence him. And as long as we have God and angelic help, we are good. So I hope you had a good, good Tuesday. I want you to get on the phone tonight. Let's text somebody, call them and let them know, hey, it's time to study the word of God with Bishop Van Sharp, the pastor and founder of Newness of Life Christian Center located at 936 Amal Avenue in the wonderful city of Tarboro, North Carolina. I want you to get on the phone, text somebody, call somebody, email them if you have to. Let's make others aware that there is the teaching and the studying of the word of God going forward. And we want to grow in the grace of God. We want to grow in the word of God. And we can't do it unless we study to show ourselves approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So come on in. Chime on in as you come on in tonight. Amen. And you ought to be thanking God. Amen. That you got angels. Amen. Watching over you. I am so glad. Don't forget to hit the like button, the share button, hit the subscribe button. Amen. Hit the follow button so that every time we come on, you'll be made aware of that fact. Come on, hit that thumbs up button as you come on tonight. Let's do it and let's do it quickly. I'm, I'm asking that the phone tree, you know what your assignment is. Rise up, fulfill that assignment. Don't be lazy. Don't procrastinate. Let's do what we've been called to do. Let's text those. Let's call those. Make them aware that, hey, this is our time of studying the word of God. Let's study the word of God and grow together. I want to say happy birthday to all, every last one of the July people. Amen. We said happy birthday to you, but we know that on July the 31st was Sister Rachel Moses' birthday, and I want, which was yesterday, was Sister Rachel Moses' birthday. Happy birthday, Sister Rachel. You know we love you. And appreciate you, amen, for, amen, who you are in the body of Christ. But now we're in August. Can you believe it? This year has really gone by fast. We are in the month of August. It won't be long before kids will be going back to school and all that good stuff. But it is August now. And August is a special, special month. It's a special, special month. Amen. Of course, Today is Brother Carl Mays' birthday. Shout out to Brother Carl Mays. Those of you that at NOLCC, you know Brother Carl now lives and resides in Fayetteville, but he will always be a part of NOLCC. And uh, we send a special shout out to Brother Carl Mays. Amen. Happy birthday, Brother Carl. And on tomorrow, which will be August the 2nd, will also be a special day. Prophetess Sylvia Anderson. All right. Happy birthday to Prophetess Sylvia Anderson. Tomorrow will be her birthday. And uh, we love you at NOLCC, Prophetess. We uh, thank God for you and in a special way. But it's also going to be the birthday of a man, Miss Dottie Bell White. That's right, Miss Dottie Bell White. Amen. That's my brother's wife, mother. Amen. We call her mother. And of course, uh, that's Elder Marvin White's mom and Pastor Marjorie White mom and all of them. And so we want to say a happy birthday to Miss Dottie Bell White. Her birthday is tomorrow. And again, this month is special to me because this is also the month in which my mother will celebrate her birthday, my natural mother, Shirley Sharp. And we'll be telling you more about that special day that's coming up soon. So it's a special, special time. And happy birthday to all of you August people. If there's somebody who's celebrating a birthday in the month of August and you're watching this tonight, you can put it up there. Amen. And of course, we'll holler back at you. Amen. We 
know that being born and being alive is a special, special thing. So happy birthday to all the August people. Let's get ready to go into the word of God. Special shout out tonight to my man, Vincent Bellamy. Amen. We want to say a special shout out to you and Curtis Bryant. Amen. So glad to have you, man, with us on this past Sunday. Yes. Great seeing you, man. Amen. As well, I want to send a special shout out to Cedric Wooten. Amen. We know that God is continually strengthening you during the loss of your mom. And uh, I want to send a special shout out tonight to Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Bellamy. We miss you yes, this past yes. Sunday. And uh, as well as Sister Patricia Body. We miss you, Sister Patricia Body. Amen. Hope to see you this Sunday. We love you in the name of the Lord. Let's get ready to have a word of prayer and let God speak to us. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that you're going to impart tonight. Have your way. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. A relevant word in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for all of NOLCC family who made a sacrifice and supported me as I went and shared the word of God with Apostle Kenneth Anderson and uh, his lovely wife, Janet, as they celebrated 29 years of ministry. We had an awesome, awesome move of God. The praise and worship was good. Amen. The praise team done a wonderful job. And of course, the word. Oh, God. God sent the word, amen, entitled, Since You Insist, Since You Insist, and the subtitle was, of course, Honoring, amen, your leaders, amen, for their diligence. And it was awesome because we uh, gave uh, the word in which God was speaking, amen, to Samuel, telling Samuel, hey, let the people have a king. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And they were insisting on wanting the king. God didn't want them to have a king. Samuel didn't want them to have a king, but they wanted a king. And so we talked about since you insist, we don't want to insist on having those things that Father God doesn't want us to have because God knows best. It was a powerful word. Amen. Because we want the will of God to be done in our lives. All right. Let's get our Bibles out now. Amen. Special shout out to Mother Whitaker and uh, and and, um, uh, and her family. Of course, we are continually praying for you. Amen. And we thank God. We knew you would have been there, Mother Whitaker, if you didn't have death in your family. But we thank God for you. Uh, shout out to Mother Doris as well. We love you, Mother Doris. Appreciate you and Mother Whitaker. Uh, Y'all are among the great mothers that we have at NOLC, and we. You know, LCC, and we thank God for you. Okay, let's deal with part four of this teaching. And uh, don't forget, get your Bibles, get and contact those that you know love the word. And we're going to get in this word and look at this subject entitled Comparing Myself to My Potential. This is part four of this teaching entitled Comparing Myself to to my potential, not comparing yourself to somebody else, not comparing yourself to somebody else who's in the same field or somebody else, amen, who's doing what you do. No, but comparing yourself to your potential because God has gifted you and graced you and he wants you to manifest what he's put on the inside of you. All right. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 12. Now, before, if you go back and listen at part one, two, and three, we read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 through 15. Tonight, I'm just reading verse 12. And it says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So we know that to compare myself with somebody else is not a wise thing, uh, is not a wise thing to do. We're not to live ourselves comparing and uh, live our lives rather comparing and competing. We are to understand that 
I need you, you need me, and we are here on planet Earth to use what God has blessed us with to make life better for mankind. And we can't do that if we are jealous of somebody else or envious of somebody else because we don't know what God has given them. God gives ability, different amount of ability, different amount of skill to, to us as we are able to manifest that. And so we understand that some people have five talents, some people have two, some people have one. But whatever God has given us, we are to use for his glory. And we covered all of that. But let's look at the word potential as we're looking at it. It means it is that which you are capable of being or becoming. That which you are capable of being or becoming. Potential is power unused, inoperative strength, unused strength, unused success. It is latent capability, latent capability. And I said this, and I want you to note this in your heart and in your mind, that we must not let laziness, slowfulness, procrastination, fear, doubt, or unbelief rob us of releasing our potential. Let me say it again. We must not let slowfulness, Laziness, slowfulness, procrastination, fear, doubt, unbelief rob us of releasing our potential. We must release our potential and not just for us, because I said to you that when we release or releasing our potential or releasing your potential empowers blesses and strengthens others. Releasing your potential empowers, blesses and strengthens others. Now we gave you and we want to continually deal with these 10 things that will help you and I release our potential. The first thing we covered is our faith, our faith, because the things that God has given you to do, you can do them by faith, you can let it manifest through you through releasing your faith. Now, it's important that most people compare your success to what they see instead of who you serve. Now, that's an important statement that the Holy Spirit gave to me, and he gave it to me so that you could understand that real success is not just based on what you see, it's based on who a person is serving. If you're serving God, you are a success. Let me say it again. If you're serving God, you are a success. I'm gonna say it one more time. If you're serving God, you are a success. You can be serving the devil and look like you're successful only to discover at the end of your journey that you weren't successful at all. So we want to want you to understand that you and I who are serving God, we are a success. But oftentimes it will not look like it because what we're doing is comparing ourselves with somebody else. And there may be somebody else who look like they're doing more and got more who are not even serving God. And we have to bring people to the reality that serving God means everything. Serving God, living for God, being born again is everything. What does it profit a man? To gain the whole world and lose his soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 
We brought nothing into this world. It's certain we can take nothing out. So real success begins with serving your creator. And we must release our faith in God. Remember what Jesus said? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. So our faith needs to be in God. No matter how much money we make, no matter what kind of car we drive, what kind of house we live in, we need to keep our faith in God. That is key to you releasing your potential is having faith in God. Number two, steward well. Steward well. This will help you release your potential. It's steward well. It's been said, and I gave you this quote last time, but you need to get it. Good stewardship qualifies you and I for more. Good stewardship qualifies you for more. So if I want to release more, I have to be a good steward of what God already has given unto me. Don't despise, don't belittle what God the Father has given you. He knows your down sitting. He knows your uprising. He knows the number of hairs on your head. And he know, and he knows exactly what you're able to produce. So he gave you what you needed. He gave me what I needed. So what I need to do is compare myself and what you need to do is compare yourself, compare myself with my potential. You compare yourself with your potential. That's what Peter needed to do. Instead of looking at John, who was a disciple of Jesus, Peter was concerned about John and Jesus said to Peter, what is that to you? See, that's how it ought to be. What is that to you? In other words, that has nothing to do with you. Peter, I've given you something. You use what I've given you. See, God has given every last one of us something. Every one of us has something that if we would value it and treasure it and use it for the glory of God, we'll see that it will manifest itself in a powerful way. So we said under steward well, you need to put A, B, and C, and under A, put under there, manage your time. Manage your time. You want to be a good steward over your time. Listen, before we got saved, we wasted time. Wasted time with foolish life, with a foolish lifestyle, with foolish habits. We did a lot of things with our bodies and minds that caused us to mismanage our time. Now it's up to you and I who are saved to manage time wisely, to use these 24 hours each day in a way that is productive. That's why at night, my wife, she does it better than me in that regard. She'll start writing down what she got to do on tomorrow. Amen. And she start writing it down. What she going to do all day long. Amen. What I do, I start fixing my mind towards those things, knowing what I got to do on tomorrow Governing my, my, because I understand that I got to maximize my time. So it's important that we manage our time. Amen. As I said, my wife, she does it better than me as far as that is concerned. Amen. As far as writing it down is concerned. Now I manage my time, but she has, she writes it down. Amen. Now under this also put B, manage your talents and gifts. Now, when the Bible speaks about talents, the Bible's talking about money. 
I'm talking about your giftings, the thing that God, that you can do. Some people can sing. Some people can play a piano. Some people can play a violin. Remember the Williams sisters, they were able to play tennis well. In other words, we have to manage our talents and our gifts. We have to manage those gifts that God has given unto us. We have to manage them. And C, manage your resources. You got it? Manage your time, manage your gifts, and manage your resources. We have to manage that. Okay? It's been said that God protects his resources from bad management. What did I just say? God protects his resources from bad management. Now, remember, all of these things we can improve. We can get better at any of this. But in order for us to be fruitful and to multiply, which was the command of God, God, when he created man, created man to be fruitful, to multiply. He created man to release his potential. So God already knew that man had another level to go to, that man had another level to stretch himself towards, that man was able to be more productive and more fruitful than he already was. God had put within man seed so that he could be more productive, so he could be more fruitful. Then he gave man every herb bearing seed, everything that will yield fruit. He gave man seed, knowing that if he would plant it in the ground, it would produce more. So you and I need to understand that we have to release our potential. It's also been said money is attracted to good management. Now, that's that's a statement you ought to write down somewhere and never forget it. Money is attracted to good management. Isn't, see, some people think that money is just going to be attracted to you because you're saved. No, 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 no. If you're a bad manager, you will find a lot of sinners getting money because they can manage it better than a saint. We have to understand that we need to learn how to manage money well. And if we manage money well, money will be attracted to us. God, who is able to sit down one, raise up another, promotion coming from him. God, who's able to turn men's hearts. God will make sure that money and things get into the hands of those who can manage well. Remember the story, as I said, about the talent. The man who took his money and hid it, what did God do? He said, take it, take that talent, this money from that man and give it to the person that got 10. Wow. What is God saying? Take it from one who is not a good steward and give it to somebody who's a good steward. So you and I must steward our resources well, whatever those resources are. Your car is a resource. You got to steward well. You got to take care of it. You got to get the oil change and do those things that necessary. Amen. To steward it well. Glory to God. Because again, you want your stuff to last more than five years. Hallelujah. My wife and I, we have a Hemi. It's a 2006. Guess what it is? It's 2023 right now. And our Hemi is still running, still able to go where I need to go. You, have, you got to steward it. As I said, we had a Cadillac just got rid of. It was a 2001. You can manage your resources well. Manage what God gives you. Manage it well. Take good care of your stuff. Don't worship it. Don't make an idol out of a car. Don't make an idol out of a house. But you are to manage it well. You are to take care of your stuff. All right. Now, 
Let me go on to the third thing that will help you and I release our potential is we said be bold. We have to be bold. The Bible said righteous are bold as a lion. We have to be bold. Bold. Amen. And that is something that will help you release your potential. Some people can't release their potential because they're too shy. They're too timid. They're fearful. And some of the things that God has given you is going to require and demand that you be bold. You can't be shy to present your products to people. You can't be timid or afraid to talk to people. You got to you got to get on out there and talk to people and be bold. Glory to God. Learn how to stand up and hold your head up and talk to people. That sometimes hinders a lot of people from releasing their potential. They're shy. They're timid. They're shame. When they talk to people, they talk to people hunched all up. You got to talk to people like, hey, how you doing, sir? Hey, how you doing, ma'am? Not be afraid. Be bold. Come on, get out of that. Grow out of that timidity. Grow out of that shyness. Pray and tell God, God, give me boldness. Grant boldness unto me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The disciples, the apostles did that when they had been beaten and everything else. And they, they went back with the other brethren. They cried out to God and God granted them boldness. We need boldness. You got to be bold. Hallelujah. Some sinners are so bold. Amen. They're not afraid of you saying no to them or saying turning down what they got to offer you. But saints, we are like, hey. We scared, we shy, we timid. No, let's get bold. Let's be bold so we can release the potential of what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Yeah, don't be ashamed to tell people, yes, that's right. Glory to God. I got my degree. Yes, that's right. I can do this well. Yeah, that's right. God has blessed me to be able to sing. My wife, one of the greatest singers in all the world. Amen. I tell her, hey, you can sing. Be bold. Sing. Get on out there. Glory to God. They don't need to stay back in the corner with what God has given you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. Number four, be cutting edge. Be cutting edge. We have to be up to date. We have to be cutting edge people. We got to be people who are sharp at what we do, good at what we do, have a cutting edge about us. That's the will of God. Amen. It's the will of God that we stay cutting edge, that we stay on top of what's going on, that we be out front and lead the way. Remember, we're called to be the salt of the earth and we're called to be the light of the world. How can we be light? the light of the world, if we don't know what's going on, if we're not even in tune with what is going on around us, we have to be on the cutting edge. Stay abreast of what's going on. Stay abreast of the facts. That's what's going on. And then change those facts when they don't line up with the word of God. Change it with the truth of God's word. See, that's how we have to live. Number five, we said if we're going to release our potential, we have to make adjustments. We have to make adjustments. You and I have to make adjustments if we're going to release our potential. Life demands that we make adjustments. That's what happened, happened during the pandemic. You had to make adjustments. And because we made adjustments, Amen. We were able to make it through this pandemic alive. Some people didn't want to make no adjustments. Well, ain't nothing. This ain't real. This ain't nothing. I ain't going to wear no mask. And I ain't going to get no shot. And I ain't going to do this. And I ain't going to do this. And they're dead today. Got a premature death. Because they did not make adjustments. They didn't make adjustments. We have to make adjustments. That's what sometimes people, when they go to the doctor, 
The doctor tell you what certain things to do. Make some adjustments in your diet. Make some adjustment with how you're eating. Make some adjustment with what you're drinking. And we come right out of the doctor mad at the doctor because we don't want to make no adjustments. And some of those adjustments are healthy adjustments for your survival, for you living a little bit longer. We know these bodies ain't going to last forever. They're temporal. They're not meant to last forever, but we ought to want to get the most out of them and we ought to want to get the, as many years out of them as we can. Let's maximize our bodies and get as most get as much productivity out of our bodies as we can. The same way we do our cars, we ought to do our bodies. Our bodies need tuning up. Our bodies need to be taken care of. So we make adjustments in life. Life demands you making adjustments. And some people, they're so rigid, they don't ever want to change. Now, I'm not talking about taking down from the word of God. There are standards to God's word that we will never compromise. Jude said, let us earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. So we know when it comes to God's word, we're not talking about adjusting to the times with that. In other words, we're not adjusting and say, well, it's OK for a man to be with a man or a woman to be with a woman because of the times and because these our uh, nation passed laws that says it's OK for same sex marriage. No, we're not talking about adjust to that. No, we're going to stand flat footed and boldly declare that it is the will of God for male and female to be joined together in matrimony. Male and female, not male and male, not female and female. We are not going to adjust the word of God to what we want. We are adjusting ourselves to the word of God. Let me say what I'm let me say that again. We are not trying to adjust the word of God to what we want, but rather we are adjusting ourselves to the word of God. In other words, we're not trying to change the word. We're letting the word change us. We're letting the word change us from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from strength to strength. All right. That's what we're talking about. Number six, take risk. Be willing to leave the pack. You will never release your potential if you're not willing to take risk and leave the pack. In other words, some of the people you're hanging around Amen. May not be willing to step out with their business idea, step out with their create creativity. And you have to be willing to step out. And do what God says do and lead people in the boat for them to catch up later. That's what Peter did. Peter did what? He stepped out and walked on the word that Jesus said, come. And Peter stepped out. He said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. And Peter stepped out. He left the pack. The rest of the disciples stayed in the boat. Never, ever had an experience like Peter had. Peter had an awesome experience. He walked on water like Jesus. The other disciples never experienced that. Peter did. Why? Because he was willing to take a risk and leave the pack. Look at Genesis 12 verses one and two. Genesis chapter 12 verses one and two says, now the Lord has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. In other words, for Abram, to release his potential. He had to get out from among his own kindred. He had to get out of his country and he had to get out of his father's house. He had to leave the pack. He had to get out. Now, why did he do that? To go to where God was trying to take him. See, some of us are around people who don't see what we see, 
who don't hear what we hear and we have to step out and do the will of God, take that risk and do what he said do. Now, again, whatever God says to do will always be able to be backed up by the written word. You can never say God told you to do something and it's totally out of line with scripture. It will not be correct. You heard a voice, but it was not the voice of God. God is not the author of confusion. He's the God of peace. And whatever he says will line up with the written word. The spoken word must line up with the written word. All right. Les Brown said this. Too many of us are not living our dreams because we're living our fears. Fear will keep you in the boat. Fear will keep you from doing what needs to be done in order to release your potential. Some people, just, they won't admit it, but the bottom line is they're scared. They're afraid. And the Bible tells us constantly, fear not. We're not to let fear rule our lives. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Love and the power and of a sound mind. We must not be afraid. It's been said our need for certainty can keep us stuck in unproductive patterns. That's a powerful statement. Our need for certainty can keep us stuck in unproductive patterns. Some people stay in a pattern that's getting them absolutely nowhere. But in their mind, it's a sure thing, but it's not productive. You rather step out and do something that is risky and find out in the end it was productive than to stay in an unproductive pattern. Don't stay in your comfort zone. Move on out. All right. It's been said courageous people are able to take risk and deal with uncertainty. Courageous people are able to take risk and deal with uncertainty. Why didn't Saul and the army of Israel fight Goliath? They were afraid. David took a risk. David believed he had beat the bear. He had beat the lion. He could beat Goliath. But it was risky. Think about it. It was so risky that Saul tried to give David his armor. Because he said, this man been fighting. Oh, ever since he was <laughs> your age, you're not ready for him. But David said, yes, I am. I'm ready. I'm ready for him. Saul offered David his armor. David couldn't use it because he hadn't proved it. And he went with what he knew and believed would work. He stayed with his slingshot, released his potential because why? He had the potential of being a giant killer. He would have never known if he didn't step out and demonstrate courage. It's been said now, this is a powerful statement. I'm getting ready to rock your world with this one now. Why play small when the universe is so big? Mm, could great somebody. Why play small when the universe is so big? Your dreams are supposed to be so big that if you tell people, some of the people you tell, not all, but some of the people you tell, will say, man, you not lost your mind. There ain't no way that can happen. There ain't no way you can get it. There ain't no way it can be. But you and I are called to defy the odds because we got a big God on our side. Come on, <laughs> type that in tonight. Come on, say that with me. I've got a big God on my side. Yeah, I'm a dream big. I'm going to think big because I got a big God on my side. Hallelujah. I'm not going to play small when I got a big God like this on my side. The God of the universe, 
The God who said, let there be light and there was light. The God who spoke the worlds into existence. The God who created man from the dust of the ground. Breathe into him the breath of life. The God who put man in a deep sleep. Pulled out of him a rib and created a woman. Why should we play small when we got a big God like this on our side? Come on. You need to say that. Come on. I'm going to dream big. I'm going to think big. I'm going to talk big because I got a big God on my side. Come on. Type that in, y'all. I got a big God on my side. Hallelujah. That's who our faith is in, our big God. I remember years ago, Ephraim Yodophia, a great man of God, hallelujah, came to our church and his message was, amen, how big is your God and what can he do? <laughs> oh my God, how big is your God and what can he do? The earth is the Lord, Psalm 24 and verse 1. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in. God wants us to think big, talk big. You cannot see big things thinking small, talking small. And many of us are trying to live within the confines of our pocketbook. And we're not letting God stretch us and have big dreams that are so big that God has to step in. That's where God wants us. He wants us thinking so big that it's something that he has to do for us because we know it's not by might, nor is it by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. All right. Number seven. Number seven. Here's the seventh thing is be confident. Be confident. If you're going to release your potential. Not only must you be bold, not only must you be courageous, you must be confident. Saints, we ought to be talking and moving and walking conf in confidence. Yeah. Listen, every one of us should seek to be confident in our own skin. In other words, what are we talking about? Comparing myself with my potential. So you're not trying to be somebody else. You're not trying to be another individual. You know that you are the best version of who God created you to be. There's not another one of you anywhere on this planet. And you are just as good. You are just as beautiful. You are just as handsome. You're just as wonderful as anybody else because you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. Yes, all of us. Got different ear sizes, nose sizes, lip sizes, head sizes. But guess what? God created us this way. And we need to be confident in our own skin. You must take note of what you're good at. Take note of what you're good at. And be honest with yourself. And ask others around you to be honest with you. You don't need flattery. You're too, you're too old for that. You want to be a person that people can tell the truth. Well, how did I sound? Did I sound good? No, you sound terrible. How did I sound? Can I sing? No, you can't sing. Uh, 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 how did I do? Did I preach well? No, sir. The, real, the truth of the matter is you can't preach. God, I don't believe God called you. See, we got to be honest with people so people can find out what were they really created to do. And release the potential in the area where they really are good and gifted at it. Because let me say this to you. When you are good and gifted at anything, the world is waiting to pay you. Let me say it again. When you are good and gifted at anything, the world is waiting to pay you. People don't mind paying for something that you do it well. If somebody work on your car and do a good job, you don't mind paying them. It's somebody who is a wannabe mechanic who mess your car up. You don't want to pay them. Hallelujah. All right. So let's be confident. And the way to be confident is be confident in your own skin. Find your niche. Find what you're good at and release your potential and keep taking it to one level to another level. Never get satisfied 
Because why? The best hasn't been seen. The best version of who you are, the best version of what you got on the inside has not been released yet. And each and every day is an opportunity to release more and more of it. All right. Number eight, inspire change. You can never release your potential if you don't seek to inspire change. Now, this one is very important. I covered it last time, but it's, it's a truth that we must know. We cannot make people do, but we can inspire people to do. Let me say it again. We cannot make people do, but we can inspire people to do. If you keep trying to make people do, they're going to get you in the flesh. Moses got in the flesh. One of the meekest men who ever walked the planet. The man was meek. The man interceded for the nation of Israel, told God, God, hey, if you don't spare them, blot my name out of the book. The man cared about the nation of Israel, but the nation of Israel kept complaining, kept murmuring to the point they provoked Moses and Moses did not go into the promised land because he did not sanctify God in the eyes of the people. What did he do? Rather than inspire change, Moses wanted to make them change. You cannot make people do right. You cannot make people do. And this is important if you're a leader, because if you're a leader, your job is to inspire. Your job is to help people find the passion and the inspiration to achieve. You're trying to inspire people. Great leaders inspire change. They don't make people change. They inspire change. I'm on this uh, Facebook and YouTube to inspire, to motivate you, to help you be the best, the best version of who God has called you to be. I can't make you do anything. Even as a pastor, a lot of pastors have quit pastoring and now they are fussing at the people and they just wasting their time because why? You're trying to make people change and you cannot browbeat people in the change. I gave some scriptures in that message, amen, the other uh, on Sunday evening that, hey, that was so powerful because if, even if you ground people almost to a powder, you can't make people change, but you can inspire. And the word of God, listen at what the Bible said about the word of God. The Bible said, Paul said it to Timothy, Timothy, that every word is what? It, it's God breathed. It's Men spake by the inspiration of God. They spake as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the word of God is God breathed. It's inspired. So if we speak the word, the word is full of the breath of God, the pneuma of God. And the word of God will inspire those in a way that they could not be inspired otherwise. What helps you release your potential is you want to go and be what God wants you to be so you can inspire change. Your life will have an effect on somebody. I tell people the average person's life will affect at least 250 people or more. Everybody. Watch. Notice how many people at least goes to every funeral that take place. Notice there's more than 10, there's more than 20, there's more, there's at least 100 or more people, almost 200 people at, at most funerals. Why? Because you are touching somebody's life. Somebody loves you, cares about you, and they show up at your funeral. Number nine, keep seeing the big picture. Keep seeing the big picture. You will never release your potential if you don't seek to inspire change and if you don't see the big picture. If the enemy can cause you to see only me, myself and I, you will never release your potential. You got to see the big picture. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, Hebrews chapter 12, verse two. 
It said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, excuse me, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In other words, when you're going through what looks like hard times or hardness, get your eye on the joy that's coming. Get your eye on something good, something powerful happening in your future. And a lot of people don't do that. They don't see the big picture. The devil is fighting you in your present about something in your future that he don't want you to lay hold of. And that's what you got to know. Something must be coming down the pipe and the devil don't want me to get it. Some some blessings must be getting ready to show up because the devil wouldn't be fighting me this hard and coming up against me like this unless something big and bold and beautiful is about to take place. Ta -ta -ta -ta. I don't know who this word is for, but I want to tell you something that I want you to get a hold of. God has a blessing with your name on it. I said God has a blessing with your name on it. That's the big picture. That's right. There's some blessings coming your way. Jesus saw the joy that was set before him. That's what made him endure the cross. That's why the Bible said it this way. Weeping may endure what? For a night. But what happens? Joy cometh when? In the morning. So where should my focus be? On the weeping or on the joy that's coming? My focus needs to be on the joy that's coming. Hallelujah. I think it, it was one of the songwriters that wrote a song that said, there will be glory after this, after this. There's coming a blessing after this. There's coming some joy after this. There's coming some victory after this. Glory follows, glory to God, turbulence or storms, or shame. Glory comes in the end. That's why the Bible tells us, though the vision tarry, wait for it. At the end, it shall speak and it shall not lie. See the big picture. The small picture was Jesus was going through, being spit on, being beat having a spear put in his side, having nails put in his hand. That was what was happening. But Jesus endured all that because he knew I, if I can go through this, I have a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. If I go through all this, I can rescue nations I can save the world. That was the big picture. So he put up with it what he was going through currently because he saw the big picture. The devil is always trying to blind people to the big picture. Come on, type that in. Say, I see the big picture. Is there anybody out here who see the big picture? Do you see the big picture? Do you see that, hey, newness of life, we're not just doing something. There's a big picture here. There's souls to be saved, people to be won. Hallelujah. Some people, they don't see the big picture. You're trying to let them know, hey, look, we're on television. We turn people through radio. There's a big picture here. They just see the little small picture, what I want. I ain't getting my way. So I ain't, I leave. You see small, you're small minded. You're small thinking. We need some people who see the big picture. What's the big picture? What is God really up to? Come on. Think about it. When we were on Granville Street, how do we endure it? We saw the big picture. When we were on Dial Street, how do we endure it? I saw the big picture. My wife and I saw the big picture. And where we at now? Guess why we ain't doing it? Because we see the big picture. We bought 11 acres of land to put a new facility on that's going to reach more people than we're currently reaching. You got to see the big picture. Hallelujah. 
Now, here it is, number 10. Here go at number 10 now. What are we giving you? 10 things that will help you release your potential. There's more to you than meets the eye. And what you cannot afford to be around is people who underestimate what God has put on the inside of you. You cannot, I'm telling you, you cannot be around people who want to put you down, who want to look at you like you're nothing, who think of you as if you're not valuable. You are valuable. You are needed and you got something to offer this generation. God allow you to be born in such a time as this because you got something to offer. I'm talking to you, Cynthia Wilkins. You got something to offer, great woman of God. I'm talking to you, glory to God, Ladorius Leonard, if you're watching this. And I'm talking to you, Ricky Pender, if you're watching this. I'm talking to you, Sister Linda Brunson, and you're watching this. Prophetess Fleming, Brinson, and Prophetess Fleming, and all of you great people of God. Listen at me, Sister Marilyn Smith and Sister Eugenia Drone and Sister Elizabeth, all of you great people of God that are watching this. Hallelujah. We have something to give to this world around us. And we must know that. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Now, here's number 10. To release your potential, you got to stay with it. You got to stay with it. You got to stay with it. We must continue to work our good, wholesome routine. Because I'm telling you, if you keep working that good, wholesome routine, your potential will manifest. A routine, I said this before, is a regular way of doing things in a particular order. Jim Rohn said this, if your habits don't line up with your dreams, y'all heard me quote it before, I'm going to keep saying it. It's a quote by Jim Rohn. If your habits don't line up with your dreams, then you need to either change your habits or change your dreams. Some got to give. If your habits don't line up with your dreams, you got to change either your habits or you got to change your dreams. My hopes are that you would change your habits and keep your dream alive. Stay with it. Socrates said this. The soul, like the body, accepts by practice whatever habit one wishes it to contact. Your soul, like the body, accepts by practice whatever habit one wishes it to contact. Now, watch this. We must demonstrate patience which is steadfast endurance. We got to demonstrate what? Patience. What is patience? Steadfast endurance. Staying with it. Staying with it is important. Look at James chapter 1, verse 3. James chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. I'm going to finish it out tonight. James 1, 3 and 4 says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience, steadfast endurance, have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. What? If I stay with it, have steadfast endurance, I come to a place where I have no lack. Look at this in the Living Bible. The Living Bible said this. Listen at the Living Bible. For when the way is rough, when the way is rough, your patience have, has a chance to grow. So let it grow and don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything strong in character, full and complete. Wow. Man, that's powerful. That's some powerful stuff. James 1 and 4 in the NIV, in the NIV says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So if I'm going to release my potential, I got to stay with it. Some of you in the right field, you in the right thing for your life. You just got to stay with it 
to it manifest what it ultimately will manifest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. James 1, 2 and 4, 2 through 4 in the Message Bible says, you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the lot. I mean, into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work. So you become mature, well and well developed, not deficient in any way. Wow. James telling us this. He's telling us how patience has to have its perfect, its complete work. Have that steadfast endurance. Said, devil, I'm never going to quit. You are, you are fighting a, a winner. You're fighting an overcomer. You're not fighting a quitter because ain't no quit in my game. Mm. Woo Did you hear what I just said? Somebody need to type that in. There's no quit in my game. There's no quit in my game. There's no quit in me. I'm not looking back. I'm pressing on. James tells us that. All right. Let me read it to you in the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation says, for you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. Nothing missing and nothing lacking. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like that Hebrew word, shalom. Shalom, complete peace. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Wholeness, wellness. God always is calling us to our place of peace. Shalom, shalom. He will keep us in perfect peace. Shalom, shalom. All right. Let me look at John 8, 31 and 31. 32. These are last scriptures for tonight. And I'm going to give you a little bit more. It said, then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Notice Jesus said to the disciples, if you continue in my word, not get started and drop out. Continue in my word. The word continue used in verse 31 is the Greek verb meno, M-E-N-O. That is the same Greek verb meno, M-E-N-O, that's used in St. John 15 and 4. In St. John 15 and 4, he said, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in me. No more can ye except ye abide in me. The word abide that's used in St. John 15 and 4 is the word meno, M-E-N-O, the same word for continue. The word abide and meno, it means to stay in a given place, stay in a given place. Stay in a given state, relation, or expectancy. Stay, keep expecting. Well, if it don't happen today, I'm still expecting. If it don't happen tomorrow, I'm still looking. I'm still looking. I'm still looking. I'm still expecting to be debt free. If it don't be tomorrow, it'll be the next day. Because I'm, I'm still, I'm never going to stop expecting it to happen. When you come to the house of God, when you go to the house of God, you're supposed to go there with high anticipation, great expectancy. Expect a move of God. Expect God to use the praise and worship team. Expect the glory to fall. Expect God to speak through the man of God or the woman of God. You cannot live your life like it's nonchalant or like nothing really matters. People like that don't get their potential release. Remember, comparing yourself 
to your potential. How are you going to release your potential when you're living life as if nothing matters? As if nothing, uh, well, you know, whatever, but whatever, whatever. Oh, man, people like that drain you. People like that suck the life out of you. Because we need to be around people who are expecting something to happen. Believing for miracles, believing for signs and wonders, believing for an anointing to hit their lives, believing for an anointing to hit the man or woman of God, believing for the power of God to manifest itself, believing for a high praise to hit the building. Glory to God. This word means to abide, to continue, to dwell, to endure. Listen to that. What else it mean? To be present, to remain, to stand, glory to God, to tarry. And it means to settle down and take up residency. That's what abide means, to settle down, take up residency. In other words, make this the place that you abide, live, glory to God. Well, I'm out of time tonight. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that you will compare yourself to your potential. Don't compare yourself to nobody else, but you got to keep saying every day, I'm releasing more of who I am. I'm releasing more of what God gave me. When you go to work, that's what you're doing. You're working out what's on the inside. Work releases your potential. You don't know what you can do until you work. You don't know what you can accomplish until you work. You have to work out your soul's salvation. This thing that's on the inside must be worked out on the outside. The joy that's on the inside got to be worked out to the outside. The peace that's on the inside got to be worked out to the outside. Come on. Release your potential. The world is waiting for you to be who you really are really have been chosen and called to be. God did not save junk. He saved treasure. He rescued valuable stuff. His blood was shed for you because there's something valuable in you. Let me say it again. His blood was shed for you and I because there's something valuable in you and I. There's something precious in you and I. There's something great in you and I and the devil don't want us to discover it don't want us to know about it and he wants it covered up but I come to help you uncover it to help you reveal it to help you be everything that God has made you to be now you won't look like somebody else because God never made you like somebody else but you'll be the best you that you can be and God can be glorified in what he has made you. And you can say like the Apostle Paul, I am what I am by the grace of God. Who knew that in Peter was a great apostle? Who knew that in Saul, who was persecuting the church, was one of the greatest apostles that could ever walk the earth? Who knew that in Resinesta Rogers was a voice that would shake up the world? Who knew that in her was a pastor's wife? Who knew that in her, glory to God, was the ability to write songs and music? See, I'm telling you, you don't know what's in you. Who knew that in Van Sharp was 13 books and many more to come? You don't know what's in you until you release your potential. I'm out of time. Got to go. Amen. Shout out to Betty Dalberry, Gloria Knight, Cynthia Wilkins. Yes, 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 yes. Yolanda Johnson. Glad to know you're watching tonight. Tanya Gallette. Hey, Tanya. Tanya Gallette. Oh, my God. A precious woman of God. One of our, amen, uh, members of Newness of Life would always be a part of what we're doing. We love you, Tanya. We thank the world of you. Shout out to Maggie Dupree. Yeah, I appreciate your comments, Maggie. Appreciate I appreciate you tonight. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. And Minnie Bullock. Appreciate you, Minnie. Elder Marvin White. That's right. Miss Dottie Bell's birthday is tomorrow. I know you ain't going to forget that. 
<laughs> if you do, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Amen. Please make sure you give her a kiss and a hug for us tomorrow. Amen. From Pastor Reese and I. We love Miss Dottie Bell. Amen. Shout out to Ricky Pender. Amen. Brother Wade, man of God. Shout out to you. Uh, yeah. And uh, Monique Brown, which her name is Quanita Brown. What? Uh, Quanta. Okay. Well, you got Quanita. Okay. Got spelled. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Quanta Brown. Monique. Monique. Appreciate your comments always, Monique. We love you. Amen. And even those who didn't sign on, yeah, shout out to all of you who may not sign on because sometimes we meet people. I meet pastors and prophets and apostles who say they watch us all the time on Facebook. They just don't sign on. Shout out to all of you who don't sign on. We love you with the love of the Lord. Don't forget. Amen. Uh, what's that? Don't sign off early. Some people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't sign off early tonight because I got to give y'all the scripture for the month of August. Remember, every month, every month, we give you a scripture that we want you to look at in the morning and look at before you go to bed at night. Now, we just gave you for the month of July 2023, we had the book of Psalm 25 and verse 14 that said the secret of the Lord is with them that uh, fear thee and all that. But now we're going to give you a new one tonight, but we're going to give it to you at the end. So y'all be ready. So you won't cut off before you get the scripture. Listen, listen, I want to tell you about two powerful books that we got uh, tonight before we uh, get out of here. One is entitled How to Overpower Discouragement. This little simple book, not very expensive at all. Amen. Call our office and get it. How to Overpower Discouragement. Because A lot of people are discouraged. And get this one called Death, A Need to Understand. We've written 13 powerful books. Call the office at 252-641-0098 and get an understanding of all those and uh, get all 13 books in your repertoire before we come out with 14 and 15. And uh, some powerful things are going to happen because I told you this is the year of resurrection, exposure, and expansion, expansion. So exposure is coming to our lives for the purpose of expansion. So we're excited about what God is going to do next. Now, listen, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, give your life to Jesus. Stop procrastinating. Stop waiting. Today is the day of salvation. The day you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Remember, I said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, lose his soul? You have a soul that Jesus shed his blood for, went to that cross for, died for, and rose again for. You are valuable, and you're too valuable to go to hell. Amen. Hell was never meant for you. It was meant for the devil and those angels that rebel. So you and I have an opportunity to have life and have it more abundantly. And the only way to have that kind of life is through Jesus Christ. Give us a call after this program is over at 252 Five six three five three eight two, and we'll be glad to pray with you. Two five two five six three five three eight two. Also, any of these messages that you are hearing and watching can be viewed again on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Amen. A few minutes following this program, you can check it out on YouTube. Also, each and every Tuesday night we're here at seven thirty is our Bible study. We start at seven thirty, and at seven o'clock. On Thursday night, we do a program called Sharp Points. So this Thursday at 7 o'clock, you can tune in and uh, it's going to be powerful. Each and every Sunday, we're back in our local building in the local place of worship. And that starts at 10 a.m. Listen, 10 a.m. We used to do a long time ago before the pandemic. We used to start at 11 o'clock. So don't come at 11 o'clock now. You got to be there at 10 a.m. We start at 10 and then we strive by the grace of God. Sometimes the anointing carries us woo, and it's hard. Amen. But we try to be on Facebook and YouTube at 1030 Amen. at 1030. So come and if you can't uh, be there for a live service, watch us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube. We come on simultaneously each and every Sunday at 1030. OK. I ain't gave the scripture for August. I ain't gave it to y'all yet. No, I ain't gave it to you yet. Y'all waiting on it. I ain't gave it to you. 
I will give it to you. Look, several ways you can bless our ministry and donate and give and help us get things done because God wants to give you more so you can have more to give to the kingdom, to kingdom projects. That's why God wants to bless your life so you can give big to kingdom projects so that the word of God can go out and be heard and others can get delivered from the things that you were once bound with. Other people now are out there in bondage to those same things and we need to help them. All right, now listen, if you are a person that you haven't found a local church yet, but you want to tithe to our ministry, here's how you do it. You got to go and write out that check or the money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box, 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box, 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina. Zip code 27886. Or you can go to the Vanco mobile app. Download the Vanco mobile app. You'll see something that looks like this. And type in Newness of Life Christian Center. And you can sow a seed that way. And if you would like to give a gift to Pastor Reese and I, we definitely appreciate your giving to the church. We definitely appreciate you giving to us. Thank you so much. If you would like to bless us personally, go to your cash out, type in the dollar sign R E V S H A R P E. The dollar sign R E V S H A R P E. Okay? And, uh, we appreciate it. Or if you don't have a cash app, but you want to give, you can write us a letter and mail it at P.O. Box 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. On your check or your money order or somewhere in the letter, let us know that this is for Van Sharp or for my wife and I. Just a note. All right. Yeah, a little note. OK, thank you so much for watching tonight. Don't forget, if you're ordering books, you can make checks payable to Van Sharp. Amen. We have 13 powerful books. We told you about two of them. And some of you need this one called Where Are Those Miracles? Releasing the Power of God. Powerful book that can be a blessing to you. And if you're a lady, come on, ladies. What are y'all waiting on? Ladies, y'all to be pushing this book. It's called Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. This book has helped so many women and it can help you. If you get a hold of and men, men, you need to be pushing this book called I Am My Brother's Keeper. I am really, oh my God, even today on the news, people shooting each other in Durham all the time, all this craziness. We need to know that we are our brother's keeper. Powerful stuff. All right, now listen, listen. Y'all ready for the scripture tonight? Here we go. The scripture for, for this month is found in the book of Psalms. It's going to be Psalms 84 and verse number four, 84 and four. And it says this, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Selah. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still Praise in thee, Selah. One of the things that the enemy don't want is us in the house of God. He doesn't want to. He want people everywhere at the football game, at the basketball game, at the movies, everywhere except the house of God. But blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will still be praising thee, Selah. And, 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 and listen, if you got the. ERV translation, the easy read translation. Let me read it out of the easy read translate. I'm reading it out of the easy read translate. It says, great blessings belong to those who live at your temple. They continue to praise you, see law. Great blessings. That's for somebody tonight. Great blessings are coming your way if you just stay in the house of God. Stay with the people of God. Great blessings await us if we stay with God. I'm so glad I stayed with God. Didn't give up. Didn't quit. Stay with the people of God. Great blessings belong to those who live at your temple. They continue to praise you, Selah. That's Psalms 84 and 4 
in the ERV translation. Hallelujah. 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 The voice, the voice translation says, how blessed are those who make your house their home, <laughs> who live with you. They are constantly praising you. Pause. Oh, my God. Oh, that's good stuff. Amen. All right. I got to go. Happy. Yeah. Let me say that again. Happy birthday to the August people. Happy birthday. Today was Brother Carl May's birthday. Happy birthday again, Brother Carl. And tomorrow, tomorrow is Prophet Sylvia Anderson's birthday. And on tomorrow, shout out to that great woman of God. We love you. Her birthday is tomorrow. Her cash out is a dollar sign, Pastors Anderson. Okay. If you want to. Yeah, your, uh, her cash app is the dollar sign. The dollar sign P-A-S-T-A-S. P-A-S. P-A-S-T-O-R-S Anderson. Okay, Pastors Anderson. That's her. That's her cash app. Okay. All right. For those who might want to bless her, Amen. And then tomorrow is gonna be Miss Dottie Bell White. Now Miss Dottie Bell is over ninety years old. She is ninety something years old. All right. Yeah. Elder White, put that up there. How old is Miss Dottie Bell White? Your mama. Amen. I know he ought to say something and, and put it up there. And tell us. Miss um, Dottie Bell is near near a hundred years old, and that's awesome. And still got her right mind, and that's a blessing from God. Elder White, you still there? Okay. Anyway, she's 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 close to a hundred. Amen. And uh, she she got to probably be about ninety eight. Or 99. Or she's in the, she's high in the 90s. And we thank God for how he has kept that lady. Amen. We give honor to God for that and glory to God for that. At any rate, I got to go. Amen. And uh, we love you tonight. Thank God for all of you who tune in and watch. Amen. Great blessings belong to those who live at your temple. I mean, don't forget Psalms 84 and 4 in the King James that says, Bless are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, see law. Psalms 84 and 4 is the scripture you need to look at for the month of August 2023. We want you to look at it in the morning before you do anything else and at night before you go to bed. All right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, now, listen at me. That woman of God doesn't look that age no. at all. God has blessed her and graced her. She'll be how old? 75. That she ain't true. She put it up there. Come on, prophetess now. You trying to pull our leg. You know you ain't no 75. Uh, but we thank God for that woman of God, how God has kept her. And I pray he keep her many, many, many more years. I tell you, she's been such a special lady to us. Met her years ago at a radio station called WGTM. Amen. We were both preaching on that radio station and uh, had a chance to speak to her after my broadcast went off. I spoke to her. She was coming in, getting ready to do her broadcast and stuff. And we met and exchanged information and been, that's my sister ever since. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. And uh, we pray about stuff and command the devil to back out of the way. Amen. We take our authority in the spirit. And thank God she's one who takes her authority in the spirit. All right. Got to go. All right. We thank God for you watching tonight. Don't forget. Uh, we also have another. Let me tell you about this, this other book, Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize, one of our latest release. Now, if you know somebody who has a prophetic anointing on their life, we have a book called Let the Prophet Speak. And I think last time I didn't have it up here. And I don't think I got it up here this time. Amen. But anyway, we have we have a book called Let the Prophet Speak. I have it for you next time to look at. It's a powerful book. But Long Distance Runner. Oh, my goodness. This this is a powerful book that talk to you about uh, how to go the distance because none of us want to drop out. And then we have one called Spiritual Upgrade, Challenging Yourself to Improve. Spiritual Upgrade, Challenging Yourself to Improve. That's another great book. 
and blessings of rejection, keys to surviving and enjoying your journey. We have 13 powerful books. And then I love this one. This is my sister favorite book. She loved this book. It's called Riding the Back of a Sower. Pastor Susan Sharp, that's one of her favorite books that we've written called Riding the Back of a Sower. All right. Thank God for you all watching tonight. You have a blessed, blessed Tuesday night. And you listen, go to work tomorrow full of excitement, knowing that, hey, I'm releasing my potential. I'm comparing myself to my potential. Amen. You be blessed. Have a good night. See you Thursday. See you Thursday, 7 o'clock. Now I'm going to go out. I want you to preach somewhere.